Welcome! Welcome to your favorite Tennessee Titans podcast, Tennessee Titans Weekly. Josh. Oh. Josh. Oh. What's up, folks? What is going on? Happy Monday. Happy after Easter Day to all of you out there. What is going on? Jock, it's tight sure. as talk as we always do, bro. We're about to talk about these draft targets, man, and trades and things like that, bro. I'm ready to cook. What about you, bro? Oh, man. Same here. Same here. Got a bit of refresh. I mean, coming back. So, yeah, I'm, I'm most definitely ready to talk draft, man, because we are coming up on it. What? Another 29 days? When is whenever the draft's at the end of April, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got uh we, April 1st now. We got what? Yeah, yeah, about 29 days. We'll be be there. We'll be be there to be squared. So um right. yeah, it's gonna be exciting, a bunch of speculation, a bunch of we don't know what the hell's gonna happen, type stuff, but hey, we there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right, man. That's right. Shout so, out to Bleacher Report, by the way. We here. Yes, we here. Sir. Let's get it cracking. Yes, sir. So, uh, Hulk, I'm gonna just I'm gonna hop into it, man. You know how we do uh, on the show. So we're talking draft, talking trades, talking who should we get. So we we'll propose the first question. Can you name right. me right. two players that you can just that you think or that you want uh, uh, that we should target in the first round? Jock, bro, that's a good question, man. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it like this, man. I'm going to answer with my first choice, 1A and then 1B. If 1A ain't available, then 1B is who I'm going to look at for sure. So, Jacques, man, I'm going to say this, bro. I know we have talked a lot about the draft and, you know, looking at should we get a receiver or an offensive lineman, man, and just looking at the fact that we got Calvin Ridley, you know, we, we got D-Hop from a receiver standpoint, man, and looking at the offensive line, I still think that's where we need to look at in this draft. So if I had my first pick in the with the seventh pick of the draft in the first round, man, if he is available, bro, dude, I'm going Joe Alt, man. I'm going Joe Alt, the offensive tackle from uh, Notre Dame. Uh, this guy here, man, is a is a beast. This guy again, he's six foot eight, and one of the youngest linemen in the draft. Uh, his dad, Joe Alt, uh, John Alt, I remember played at the Kansas City Chiefs back in the '90s. So he has the pedigree. He's young. He attacks at the at the perimeter. Uh, you know, it, it, when even when guys go around the edge or whatever, it keeps his pad level pretty even to be so tall. Uh, I, I really like Joe all here. Now, I will say now, if he's not available, I would go with Penn State's Olu Fashunu, man. I would go with him as well. I think Olu's actually a little bit uh, a little bit meaner than Joe Alt. Uh, still a young guy as well, too. Not as tall, but six foot six. He's a tall, tall as, he's tall as well. And you know, Pacino, what I like about him again from the standpoint, he did well when he played against Ohio State, Michigan, and those teams, man. So I really like Olu as well, too, man. So what about for you, man? So you said those are your two. If yep. they're there. Okay. So you yep. still have that tackle. Um, my two man, again, the safe pick, if he's there, would be Joe Alp or Olu. Um, because both of them, they both are different in their in the way their playing styles are. Again, like you said, Joe is a lot taller, um, a lot bigger. He struggles with the not the bend, but it's a little stiff up top. But he's still good, right? He's, of course, he's going to learn on the uh, one of the best coaches that has coached offensive linemen, so he'll get better regardless. Olu as well, right? Um, so that's my. It's almost like a one A, one B as well. My wish, if it did happen, I don't know if it's going to happen, but my second option would be Malik Neighbors if he happens to fall, which I doubt he will. The way he's drawn buzz, I think he ran a 4 3 his pro day. Yep. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. I mean, they, you can't pass it up. And LSU's pedigree for wide receivers has – they have a track record for producing wide receivers. I don't know what it is about that university. Shout out to the SEC. Shout out to LSU. You – that – that program has produced some some of the best wide receivers that we've seen in the game today. So that's something that you cannot pass up if it's there. But I just don't, I just doubt it'll be there. So for me, it'll be Joe and, and Olu. Olu, Joe, hey, if you're there, take him, right, at the number seven pick. Yes, for sure, for sure, man, for sure. So shout out to everybody in the chat, by the way, as well, those that are watching as well. We got that poll question out there, too, as far as who y'all think. We should look at in the first round for pick number seven. We have a culmination of offensive linemen and wide receiver. Tell me what you all think, for sure, for sure. So, Jacques, we're looking at this thing deep. We're looking at the draft deep. We're not just looking at the first round, pick seven. We're looking at it overall. So, 
looking at the second round, man, if, if there was two players you could think of right now that you would target, say if you pick the first guy, if he wasn't available, if you looked at somebody else, man, who would you look in the second round as well too, man? Man, the second round of the draft is interesting um, because of the fact that we have options. So say if we do go offensive lineman, right? I still say, I still think you should build up that wide receiver core because of the simple fact that D Hop is he's on he has this is his last year of his contract. That's one. Two, he's older. You still got Calvin, who Calvin uh, to me still has a lot of tread on his tires. But I want that third option. Saying Traylon can't be that third option, which he will be, especially in the newer offense. But I would like to get younger in that position as well. I know Rome Aduzier will not be there. Right, he's gone. Aiden Mitchell in Texas. If he's there, I would take him. I don't know if he's going to be there either, but if he's there, that's my guy. Take Aiden Mitchell. I like I like his routes. I like that he's aggressive. I like I like his play style. So I think he'll fit right into this offensive scheme. You can build him up. He can come in to be that third receiver if you need him to be. Right. Maybe hopefully you can say, hey, you can take over that X spot over there because we know D Hop is leaving. But that's for me. What about you all? Man, hey, facts, no paper. I'm going to say this, man. We got the poll question out there as well, too, man. Hey, we appreciate everyone, uh, you know, posting on there as well, too, man. So looking at it for me, man, in the second round, pick 38, I'm picking a wide receiver. And in particular, man, I'm picking a Donnie Mitchell if he's available. A Donnie Mitchell from Nashville. He went to high school, went to high school where my kids went to high school, not too far from where I live at. A Donnie Mitchell's a problem. This guy's six foot three. 210, ran a 4-4, big-time playmaker, has the height, has the size. This guy here not only played well at Texas, he played well at Georgia. Matter of fact, when they won the national championship, he had one of the biggest catches of the game. This guy here is a playmaker. Now, you know, will he be available is the question. It is possible. It's possible. Looking at the receivers that they have rated above him and the fact that we pick at 38, which is right at the beginning of the second round, maybe he's available so we can bring him back home and those things. But I will say this, Jock. I'm gonna throw a, I'm gonna throw a monkey wrench here. If he's not available, even if we draft an offensive line, I might look at another lineman, dude, in the second round, bro. I might, I might. And if it, you know, it depends on the receivers that's available at that pick. So if I can't get the receiver that I want, I might go with Oklahoma offensive tackle Tyler Guyton. Tyler Guyton, this guy here, man, he's very raw, but this guy here can play tackle or guard. This dude is a beast, bro. Six five. This guy was one of the leaders when it came to PFF rankings for offensive linemen in, in, in this draft. He only allowed one sack his entire year this past year. Tyler Guyton is a beast. So for those who have never looked upon this guy, man, Tyler Guyton could be there and be available. So I would prefer a receiver here. But if, the, if you don't have the guy that you want in the second round, hey, man, our offensive line sucked last year, bro. Get some young guys in there, man. Let them compete. Hey, get two rookies out there. Let them learn from each other, man. Give me an offensive lineman here, bro. If, if, take if the your receiver's offense. not available, Hawk gonna take O line the whole draft. <laughs> <laughs> like, Come on, Hawk. We gotta, we yeah. gotta, we gotta get past that, bro. Yeah, hey. I, know. <laughs> I hear you. Right. Man. I hear you. So, with that being said, Hawk, I'm gonna just hop back into it. Should we trade the seven pick, or should we stay where we at? If we're at number seven, we get something man. that we can't pass up. Would you trade it, yep. or would you stay? Man, we better stay put, man. We better stay put. We better, we better sit on the toilet, bro. We better mm. sit right there, bro, because there has been this is rare for us to draft this high. Okay. Normally the Titans always draft like 25, 26, right? Because they'll make the playoffs or get close to it. So anywhere in the 20 range they've been for the last several years. We better stay put at seven. We have an opportunity to draft an offensive lineman that could be the bookend for us for 10 years, man. And when you pick high on tackles, man, a lot of times it turn out pretty well. We better stay put, man. We stay at seven. We make things happen. Now, if we did trade, we need to get a lot of picks. You know, I, I would say that. But between the two, I'm staying at seven, man. Keep where you were. We stunk last year. We're at seven for a reason. You stay at seven. That's where I'm staying at, man. I'm staying at seven. I see those in the poll are feeling the same way. You stay put. What about you, Jacques? I mean, like you said, stay stay put if you can. If if uh, only way I would move out seven is if I'm getting multiple first round picks. That is the only way. Either that, or I'm getting another third, two thirds, or a second. But if that's the case, like you said, man, it's it's rare when we're in this position. 
we don't get this opportunity that much and you can't miss with what you're going to get in that top 10 right if yep, it's yep. if it's if it's olu if it's joe if it's hell even if it's neighbors if, if those three even marvin harrison jr i mean i'm not saying that's even out the question either right you're going to get a star there now it's rare when they don't pan out because we can always go back to the corey davis thing right but again in this situation i would stay just to stay put now I know people want draft capital, but I mean, we, I think we've done enough in free agency to kind of help with that, to combat that. So I say stay put, stay put, do what you got to do uh, and, and go from there. Yeah, for sure. For, for sure, sure. For sure. Well, I know well, one thing in our poll, man, no one is saying trade up for a better pick. So pretty nah. much people are saying we stay or we do move, we trade down to get more picks. So, Hey, we feel y'all. Well, we do got one person that does have that on there. So I, 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 I hear you on that, man. I, I do. I do. I respect you. I respect. I respect the, the thinking outside the box. I mean, it's yeah. good to think outside the box and think of different scenarios. Whoever put that, man, shout out to you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, man, absolutely. And Jacques, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw one more question out there for us, man, before we get into this live chop up. And mm -hmm. for those in the poll as well, too, but we're gonna throw this poll out there. So, Jacques, has free agency changed the way the Titans should draft? I mean, should we? No. Do you no. keep the same? Okay. Yeah, I would keep it the same because I mean, again. It'll give it gives you a better option to confirm and say, okay, yeah, we can get our left tackle. We got our left tackle. We're good. We got enough receiver help. I still again think we need to pick up another one just in case you don't know what's going to happen with injuries or anything. But I think that we've done enough in free agency to say, all right, cool. We're going to stay what we continue to do. Stick to the script. The script is we say we were going to do this. Stick to it. It doesn't need to change. Only way it possibly would have changed is if we missed out on something. But either way. I just foresee it happening either way. And then Brock Bowers, again, is the wild card where you can kind of stick him in there and say, all right, cool, Brock, come on in and do your thing, right? So, no, I don't no, I don't feel like free agency has changed anything. What about you? I think it's changed it a little bit, Jacques. Okay. Let me tell you where I feel where it's different. Now, adding LeJarius Sneed, mm -hmm. adding Calvin Ridley, you've added more talent to your team, right? Mm -hmm. So where I was saying the first and second round – receiver was a definite need right and corner somewhat a definite need now i'm i still say offensive line wide receiver i've been saying that since the start right so generally speaking i would stay at those spots as far as what i would like to draft but it hasn't made it mandatory as much as it has been for the second round and later i think offensive line should be mandatory now if we had, if we draft a receiver in the first round, I won't be mad either. But my question would be more like, well, we got Calvin Ridley. Is is it a need as much as it had been if we didn't have him? So it changes this a little bit. Then you got arguably the, the best lockdown corner in the league and Legarius Sneed there now. The need in the second round for say cornerback because a lot of people are saying corner for our second round might not be there as much because. You have him and a Woozie, you know what I'm saying, on the other side. So that's not much of a need as much as it was. So it does, I think it changes somewhat. I think it changes somewhat to I think more now we need we need more offense. I still think we need to add more on offense. So I think it changes just a little bit, man, by doing that for sure. So with that being said, you still get an offense, regardless what you're doing in the first and second round. Like you said, you iterated earlier, two offensive linemen, offense, a wide receiver, tackle. Boom, boom, boom. You're still getting office regardless. Yep, 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 yep. So, well, cool. Well, listen, we are at our favorite part of the show, man. We appreciate everybody that's in the chat. We want to give you all an opportunity. This is our live chop up. You throw questions out there for us. We're going to pop that up on the screen, the best questions, man. Again, this is on Bleacher Report, so if you're watching anywhere else, man, we won't be able to see the chat. But if you a hey, those on Bleacher Report, man, put your questions out there. We're going to answer those questions, man. We're going to do our fire takes, and we're ready to go with it, bro. Mm -hmm. So, D, 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 N for you. Yep, it wasn't Corey Davis's fault. I still think Corey Davis was a talented wide right receiver. It's the situation he was brought in. It's not his fault. No, ain't none of this. You, whenever you get drafted, it's not your fault. It's very rarely really your fault. But I like the comment, though. And Luke, 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 Luke 102 says we need linebackers and safeties. We do. We still do. Oh, we still need a, we do. And a safety. We yeah, need we them do. bad. We do like, need them bad. And bad. The, question that, the question I would ask for Luke, Luke 102 is how bad do you want a linebacker and a safety? Are we saying rookies? Are we saying free agents? You know, where will we draft one if that's what you want? 
Great question. Great question. Yep. I think, yep. uh, D. News says, what do y'all think about Trotter Jr. as an inside linebacker? Uh, I, I would draft him. I would draft him. What do you mean? Here's a challenge with Jeremiah Trotter Jr., the talented linebacker out of Clemson. Here's the problem. We don't have a third-round pick. That's the problem. So I think Jeremiah Trotter will be picked anywhere between the second and third round, not because of talent, it's because of his position at linebacker. You don't draft a linebacker in the first round unless you're just unbelievable, right? Um, I think that would be unless we trade up to get some, trade to get some third-round picks, I think that will be the challenge to get Jeremiah Trotter in the third round. But that's just my opinion on it. I keep, I keep hearing about Arizona wanting to trade down. And they have – they actually – it's funny. It's hilarious that you that we talk about this. They have our third-round pick, I think, from last year, whenever we gave it to them. It would be nice to work out some type of draft uh, 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 trade to get that third-round pick back, at least to have it – because you have talent that comes out of the third round, man, real good talent that comes out. So, yeah, and, you, and I think with Justin Simmons uh, bringing the wood, the problem is his price tag is too high. That's what I keep hearing about Justin Simmons. His price tag is extremely too high. He'll need to come down, and in, 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 in any desperate attempt, I can see the Titans, hey, we'll pay you maybe 20 mil for two years. Boom, 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 let's split it up. Let's go from there. Um, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, if you did get Justin Simmons, that would solidify this secondary to be one of the top secondaries in the league. I still think the, the media will not give us our credit, but still. Exactly. He yeah. said we got Casey in the third round. Yeah, I mean, we've had – uh, didn't Byer go in the third round? Correct me if I'm wrong. Byer was a third round pick. Yeah, he was a third round pick. So Absolutely. third rounders, man, that's our, that, that tends to be the Titans' sweet spot when it comes to drafting for some for some odd reason. I don't know what it is. I don't know why, but that tends to be our sweet spot. Uh, let's right. see. Jeff Morgan and Trey Franklin. I like that. Uh, yeah. I keep seeing Dallas Turner in the chat. Well, in order to get Dallas Turner, that's he would have to be the seventh pick of the draft. Are we looking to want to get that high for a defensive end? We have Harold Landry, right? We have we have Arden Key. So are we wanting to jump up to get Dallas Turner at that spot? And Dallas Turner is unbelievable now. He's the best pass rusher in the draft. So what do you all feel about that, about Dallas Turner? I, I, I think we have other needs, but that's just my opinion on it. I rock with that, Hulk, because you're right. We have to, again, the seventh pick is the, the, the sweet spot for that, if you want the talent. And, and it's almost I wish we had – I wish we had a left tackle because then we can go best player available at that position, okay. at that particular uh, um, position that we're in. Absolutely. Uh, Grayson23 says, what do you think we would do later in the draft? Oh, what do you think? And I'm guessing, Grayson, are you referring to the fourth round and below? Because we don't have a third-round pick, so – I believe so, in the fourth. What you think, Hall? I think I think there's a lot that can happen. I think later in the draft, you need to look for a tight end. Uh, you know, you can get good tight ends in the fourth round, fifth round. Uh, also think as well, I think we still need more offensive line depth. Uh, I think we need defensive tackles. Um, I think we need linebackers. So I think it's a culmination of of different things. Um, safeties, there are free agent safeties out there. I don't know why I'm not I'm not too hard pressed on getting a safety later because again, we don't have a lot of draft picks. But I think you go from the inside out. I think you look at – if, if I had a sort of a, an area, I would go almost D-tackle, tight end, and maybe offensive line, something in that in that, in that that way. What about you, Jacques? Uh, I actually would look at a safety in the later rounds uh, to develop them. Uh, I still think we need safety help. Uh, and I know um, before you asked about Marcus May, I, I don't know if Marcus May has been picked up, but if he hasn't, and the, uh, Wilson, our, our de uh, defense coordinator, will want him, I would say – Get them right for a cheaper price, but you still need to get younger in that position. So I would actually look at getting a safety, another tight end, like you iterated. If we don't get a Brock Bowers at the seventh round pick, right, because you're adding more talent, um, I still think you need a little bit more depth on the offensive line. So I will look at getting another offensive line, maybe another center, because we need to get younger. We are we good at center, but I at least want to have something that we can develop. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, safe for, you. Sure. for sure. Um, Great questions, by the way, y'all. Keep throwing y'all questions out there in the chat. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that's that's for me. I, I still wouldn't mind looking at the safety, man. Uh just for that. And the way that uh, uh um Wilson uh, Wilson develops uh DBs, it'll even make it better just to bring in somebody that's young. Um so yeah. Uh let me see. Somebody uh, oh, okay. EBZ said, move Landry for cap space. 
that would be that would penalize us in the cap if we let him go, man. Yeah. He's still on a contract. Long. Yeah. He's he's a yeah, that would yeah, we that person. would hit us that would hit us bad if we let him go. So no, you keep Landry. And yeah. the Titans have spent more money than any team in free agency this offseason mm -hmm. so far, by the way. Yeah. Was it 308 million? Yep, 308 million. Yeah. 308. We've been spending money and we've added nine players. So there's certain teams that have added 12 to 13 players. I mean, how do you all feel about that? Do y'all feel like the money that we have spent has been well spent? You know, let, let us know what you think. Yeah. D DN for you says, do you see Gibby or Reese starting at linebacker next to Murray? I can see Reese. Reese, man, he showed flashes last year that um, you can develop that talent. He has talent. It depends on what scheme we're playing too. I don't. I still don't know what scheme. Hawk, have you heard what scheme we're playing? Are we three four four three still? Are we three four? I have, I we? have not. And I think they're gonna probably keep that quiet okay, so for that, a while. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Depends on what scheme we're playing. Um, it depends on if either one of them fits the scheme. But what I see right. from Reese, man, he's very he's a sideline to sideline linebacker that that has a good pursuit. Gibbons, Gibby, uh, Doctor Gibby. Um, he's a good depth player. Uh, but I can see Reese starting besides Murray. Uh, versus uh, Dr. Gibby. So that's just my opinion. What about you, Hulk? 100, 100%. Facts, no paper, man. Gibbons is depth, special teams guy at best. Uh, with Reese, yeah, with Reese and Murray. Reese, Reese was one of our better performing rookies last year. He was even, he was undrafted. So yeah, man, Reese, mm -hmm. hey, Reese is a headhunt out there, man. So shout out mm -hmm. to Reese out there. Yeah. You know, he's got hey, another, he's got a. No, go ahead. He's got, you know, we'll, you know, we, when we see him in a, in a whole season, we'll see how well he does. But for like the six games he played, he did a really good job, man. Right. He did. Right. Yeah. K Pleasure says trade back, by the way, 15 and 15 through 25. Add picks and still have a chance at the top of line or defensive talent. We can get a wide receiver second round and second and third round. And that's why I have that scenario with the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona wants to move down. We don't want to move up unless we really see something that we really would want, which I I don't know. Again, I don't see why we would trade up. But with that being said, Arizona has the draft capital, and I can literally tell everybody what their draft capital is. How, have you seen their draft capital? Who is this now? Arizona Cardinals. Have you seen their – I have. Their, their, yes. Mm -hmm. They have they – need every, They need every pick too. They do. They do. But they have two first round picks, one from Houston, one from Nassau. I think they have a second, two third round picks, either two or three third. They got trap capital to just move how they want to move. So with the Harold Landry, let me say this. Are you ready for this? With the Harold Landry comment that they're saying, if we wanted to do a deal, you could send Harold to Arizona. If you remember their GM is a former uh, person on the Titans. Send them to Arizona, have Arizona take that that money, right? They take the hit on that. We get more capital. We might get an exchange player two or something crazy like that. But to get more picks, I know Rand, if you gave Rand another a third round pick, man, it's like giving him more seasoning for his 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 pot. <laughs> Rand's cooking. So, but yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Uh Tyler Newbin is his name. Okay, got it. Uh, okay, so EB says, is Harold Landry worth $17.5 million? Uh, With his age, remember his age? I think, I think for this season, going into the season, yes, going into the season. It doesn't matter how well will he do, right? Because he earned this several years ago, right? So this is, you know, this is recoup money, market money. You know what I'm saying? So... I would expect him coming off his injury. He did okay last year. Now he didn't play up to 17.5 million, but it's understood he had a tore ACL. So two years remaining off two years off of it, he should be based on his production two years ago. So going into it, I'm gonna say yes. Then it just remains to see will he be able to that's like buying a car up front and over a particular time while you drive it over the year, will it keep its value? We'll see. You know what I mean? You still got the rim, you still got all that. We'll see, man. What about you, Jacques? Um, again, just looking at the pattern, how <laughs> how Rand has worked, and I'm just looking at his trends. He's eventually gonna ask him to take a pay cut, literally. And I don't, and I don't. What's Harold's age? Is he 28, 29? 
Yeah, I think he's 28. Okay. So if you want to get younger in that spot, you do have that option. Um, and maybe you've had an option to move out next year or even this offseason to kind of say, hey, you take a pay cut and you got to go. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if, if, if a trade is in play. I'm not saying it'll happen, but I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me just because how things have transpired. They're trying to get the Titans faster, younger, stronger, but keyword faster, right? Not saying Harold Lynch is not faster, but once he gets off that, that his knee fully heals, I think he'll be okay. But that price tag is going to have to come down eventually. This is just the, the, the nature of the game, right? Um, let me see. Uh, there we go. I was looking for Bama Clark. Uh, he says, y'all think there's a chance we trade the number four pick for Marvin Harrison Jr.? Hulk, do you think he's worth the fourth round pick to trade enough to get him? Or do you think Malik's neighbors exactly. is a better receiver? He's absolutely awesome. worth it. You know, Jock, I told you the first game I saw MHJ play, first game, I called you and said, oh, he's ready for the league right now. He should be the, He's the best player I've seen in college football the last, like, five years. He, Of course, he's uh, – of course, at the fourth pick of the draft, yes, he's talented enough to be. He's talented enough to be the number one. It's just, again, teams need quarterback. So the question is, do we have enough capital to trade up from seven to four? We don't. We don't. It would have to take a lot of trades, and I don't think we have enough right now – to, to, to make that move up to number four. I don't think a team was like, oh, that's cool. We'll, we'll just go ahead and trade with you all. So I don't have the expectation that we have a chance with Marvin Harrison Jr. because we don't have enough to trade up, in my opinion. You know what I mean? So I don't know how you feel, Ja. What you, what you think? Uh, again, it's Arizona holds the number four, fourth pick, right? I think they do. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Again, that trade scenario that I just said, if they want to move down bad enough, and we can come, we can come up with some type of deal to I, hey, I'll send you Harold. I might send you my next year's third round pick. Well, we did that to Kansas City. I might send you a fourth. We can exchange picks here. It, it has, like you said, it's a lot of willing and dealing that has to happen. Would I do it if I had the capital? Hell yeah, I'll do it. I, I would most definitely do it because that adds more horses to the stable. At that point, you have the best wide receiver core in the league. Like at that point, there's no excuses at that point. But it's just hard to just if you give me time, I can pull out some trade scenarios, but it's just too much, man. It's just too much yeah, to just kind yeah. of go up there and do it. So, um, D for you, great, great question. He says, "Do y'all see any defensive ends to replace Archer?" Um, and, I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna add, yeah. Do you see any defensive ends that can replace Archer? Hall? So, on the last show, man, that we had, man, I spoke upon, uh, you know, a guy that I saw from Duke. Now, of course. I'm looking at it to say we're not drafting a defensive end in the first round as a seventh pick because that's the question. And we pick Dallas Turner, then absolutely, right? Yes. But I don't think we're going in that way. I think more than anything, if we look for a defensive end slash tackle in that spot, I don't know, in the second round, if you want to look for guys, you can. But there's one guy that I feel, man, could be pretty good, man. Is this guy here, Dwayne Carter, uh, Lil Wayne? <laughs> but not quite. But – this guy here from Duke, man, this guy plays very similar to Danico Autry, about the same size, same speed, same type of motor. Uh, yeah, I, I spoke of maybe about a fourth round pick if he's available that you take a guy like a Dwayne Carter, uh, you know, a guy, a greedy guy like Danico Autry. If all the free agents that we have, and I'm, man, I'm almost including Derrick Henry. Man, I almost say, man, I felt more sad about leaving, having Danico Autry leave the team more than anybody because. I think the salary that Houston is paying him, we could have paid him the exact same. I think it's just a matter of did Nico Archer want to be here? You know, at the moment, like, we're rebuilding. I want to win. I've never won a Super Bowl. I want to win now. Houston's more talented. I'm going that route. So, you know, unless you're picking early to replace the Nico Archer in a draft, it had to be later. What about you, Jacques? Man, I mean, that, that's – you. I've done a study on that guy as well. He's, he's pretty solid, which he, you have the reality, actually, that can replace him. But there's a kid from UCLA, you probably seen him, and I'm going to butcher his name. I'm going to say his last name, Latou, right? You've seen him. He was at the Senior Bowl. Absolutely. This kid was making waves in his pro day. He was making waves at the Senior Bowl. If we had an opportunity to get him, I would say do it. I just – second round, maybe third round, if we had a third round pick, he won't be there in the fourth. He won't be in the fifth. I'd be shocked. I would be yeah. shocked. He would have to pull a Laramie Tunsil for that to happen. He ain't going to be there. He's not. No, he's not. I'm sorry. He he's just not. But it's a win. He ain't going past the second round, dude. Hell no, he's not. No. I mean, that kid is amazing. Okay. Yeah. The way yeah. he's he speedy, six five. The way he, he moves, yeah. man, that's pretty solid, man. 
pretty bringing the pretty wood solid. bringing the wood was to, uh I'm, I'm gonna add to this with the um harold landry conversation so he, he brought up weaver and caleb murphy weaver was actually playing pretty solid before he got hurt as well caleb murphy i think has an opportunity to continue to play like he's been playing can they replace harold if if harold was to be traded it'll have to be a collective effort i don't know right i got my answer know. to that i'm gonna say no but <laughs> i'm saying absolutely not yeah, I'm no. Gonna say no no I, 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 i'm gonna say no it is again no again now let me ask you a question with marvin harrison jr does does a concern come in that he didn't participate in this pro day that he nope. didn't participate nope. in the combat okay nope okay. Nope. I've seen enough. I've seen yes. enough. I've seen enough. If he didn't get hurt against Georgia, they would be national champions, man. I'm telling you, Mar Marvin Harrison is a generational receiver, man. It's rare to get a Calvin Johnson type of receiver in the draft, bro. I so I'm going to add to that. I'm going to ask another question. In chat, y'all can participate. How this goes to you? Who's a better receiver, Neighbors or Harrison? Marvin Harrison. Okay, you said Harrison. So you stick with Harrison. Chat, I've, seen with Harrison since I've seen him. Marvin Harrison, because Marvin Harrison is a rare breed, a 6'4", 215, routes are crisp, got good speed, got great hands, great ability. Um, that's 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 rare. Now, Malik Neighbors is a heck of a ball player. Don't get me wrong. Mar Malik Neighbors is all right. But Marvin Harrison gives you things that you just you not only can't teach, you just – people just don't grow up six foot four with a father's a Hall of Famer man that has the ability that he has. I mean, he was a top receiver in his recruiting class for a reason. And again, if he if he didn't get hurt, they would be national champions. He was the main reason. So, you know, I, I like Marvin Harrison, man. Now you can't go wrong with either one of them. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> that's yeah. that's that's one. I'm just just getting the comparison. What about you? What do you think, man? And I'm still doing my because I'm doing. And we got a draft show that we do. I'm doing extensive homework on both of them. Um, right now. You can't go wrong with either one of them, though. Like, seriously. But it depends on, for me, I'm just a scheme guy. It depends on what my scheme is. It depends on what I have on my team already. Do I have that style of player already on my team? Can I take it? Can I do this? And I feel like with Marvin Harrison, not saying D Hop is there, but he, the routes, the Chris, the hands, and everything. Neighbors, I like because he's different, right? Um, the way neighbors runs his routes, he's very physical. Again, both of them, I can't go wrong with them. But right now, if I'm, I'm still doing homework. I'm just not. Nice. If I got a notch, I'm right here with neighbors over just Marvin Harrison, Marvin Harrison, just a little bit. But again, if you gave me both of them, I'm not mad at all because both schools have produced hell of wide receivers. So we have an opportunity. Do I think neighbors can? I mean, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. can fall. I don't know, Hulk. I don't know. I don't know. J.J. McCather, let me say this. J.J. McCather is the, is the cornerstone of this draft. J.J. McCarthy, the quarterback? McCarthy, my bad. My, my butch, yes, Michigan. Okay. The way they're saying that they're pumping him up to be drafting the top five, the, the top, if he goes anywhere in that, it's going to create a ripple effect to where it's going to turn around and – Things people are gonna start dropping. You don't know, right? Yeah. Not saying right. Marvin Harrison yeah. Jr. will. You'd be a fool to pass up on him. Yeah. You'd be a fool yeah. to pass up on neighbors. But yeah, yeah. Again, they I, you can't go wrong. I mean, this is. I mean, when is the last time the Titans have been in a position to have options? This this type of options with these type of players. That's it's right. amazing. That's right. Well, hey, we'll go. We'll have one more question, y'all. We appreciate everybody being active in the chat. Again, this is on Bleacher Report. So hey, we will go one more. We'll go one more question. Ooh, I like I like this deep that I might end up with this. He said, if we if we did go neighbors, where's the where does that put Burks in the pecking order? Going, yeah. going if, if we camp, camp, go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna, let you go. I'm gonna let you go first. Go ahead, go ahead, go. Going going into camp day one, Burks will be the number three going into camp. But I think Malik Neighbors, who's a better receiver, will end up being the three receiver. Once it's all said and done, and then that puts Burks at number four, and for them to be a building block for the next year when D Hop is gone, then Traylon Burks might be gone because he only has one more year left. So you have Calvin Ridley and Malik Neighbors. So I think at the beginning of the season four, end of the season three, and if injuries happen, two. So that's the kind of look at it. What about you, Jacques? It's the same. It's the, literally you just took the words right out of my mouth. Literally, it's the pecking order again. He's going to start at number four. <laughs> 
Not five, but at least number four because we still got Nick Aquino Westbrook who will be number five. Again, you can't never have enough receivers. You just cannot yeah. never have enough receivers. Yeah. So, yeah, sure, oh, sure, man, we got sure, one more question, bro. Sure. Just one more, one more, one more. Bring the wood. I don't want to miss y'all, man. Question for y'all. If neighbors all and all on the board, who do we take if neighbors is a can't miss pick? Ooh. So if they're – Oh, go ahead, John. Go, go for it. Go for it. Man. Man, if – that's a hell of a question because they both are a cornerstone piece. They can build a building block piece. And this scenario actually happened. Taylor Lewan and Odell Beckham Jr. You remember that, Hulk? You remember yep. that? Man, boy. Mm. Hulk, I'm going to let you go first on this one because I, 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 I got to hear this. Easy. It's easy, easy for me, man. I'm going all, all day, man. I'm going all. Okay. It's rare to get an it's rare to draft this high. And normally, off the linemen, especially offensive tackles who are the cornerstone of your offense at seven is huge. So I like all he's younger, he's a lineman. Yes, we failed on our offensive lineman in the draft. Yes, we have, but we can't always look at because we've been doing this, that means it's gonna always happen because it doesn't always work like that, right? So I'd go all here. I'm going all. What about you, Jacques? Man, I'm going neighbors. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going neighbors. is because we have the offensive line whisperer in Coach Callahan, who I know can develop talent, and you still have that second-round pick. It's rare, man. We've been doing this. We've been doing the same song and dance for a long time. Again, I'm going to iterate the same scenario with Odell Beckham, Taylor LeVon. Odell's a Hall of Famer. Taylor Lewan gave a great career for the Titans. I mean, without him, we wouldn't be where we at, right? I get what you're saying when you say you want to protect that left side. If we didn't have Callahan, Coach Callahan, then I'd probably be like, all, all day. Give me all, all day. All day. Boom. I got it. Yep. All, 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 all. But I feel like the team wants to go in a different direction. They're wanting to have a different mindset and a different culture. And we've had that culture before. We've seen that culture too many times. But we're going to go to safe pick, safe pick, safe pick. And it's, it, it's hit. And it hasn't hit, hit, hasn't hit, hit, hasn't hit. So, again, different regime, different owners, I mean, different uh, general manager, different everything. So I'm just going a different direction, man. I'm going the direction that I feel like they're going, and I'm going the neighbor's route, man. That's like Jamar Chase. And, that's like having Jamar Chase and, and Alt and you. Yep. I'm going Jamar Chase. I'm just sorry. And I, would, oh, I would wonder if Cincinnati would answer that question because they gave up on Sine Pune, Pune, uh, mm -hmm. uh Penuel from the Detroit Lions compared to uh, Jamar Chase. I wonder, it's very close. You know what I mean? It's they, very but, close on Panay Sewell. That's what I was trying to say. Panay Sewell. But, but check this out. We got the, we, we sacked them nine times and we still couldn't beat them. They still went to the Super Bowl. I mean, again, the philosophy is just, it's, it's, it's a debate that it, it can it can go either way, right? So yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, folks. Well, listen, we appreciate everybody being active on the chat, man, and watching our show for sure, man. Hey, we appreciate it. Hey, we know we, what we got out going on, man. We got a lot of draft talk to still talk about, man. You know what I mean? So check us out again. If you haven't followed us yet on Bleach Report, follow us, man. You can follow me at Lorenzo underscore the Hulk. You can follow Jacques at Jacques Merrill. For those that watch us on YouTube, if you haven't watched us, man, subscribe to us as well, too, man. Tennessee Titans Weekly. We're on Twitter, Titans Weekly 24-7. We're on Instagram at Tennessee Titans Weekly. We are in those internet streets, man. Yes, sir. And when y'all do follow us, man, we, again, we appreciate the follow. We appreciate the support. Appreciate the great questions in the chop up. Thank y'all for such supporting. And again, thank, thank you, Breacher Report, for giving us opportunity. And, hey, we look forward to the draft. And we appreciate y'all. And, Hulk, go ahead and take us out, man. Okay. You all have a great day and rest of your week. And as we always say, and as we always do, man, facts, no paper.